from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to try to address the questions everybody is thinking about but perhaps afraid to ask about the differences between AACR2 and RDA. My name is Melanie Paluda. I'm an LC cataloger and a NACO trainer and was heavily involved in the RDA training effort that went on. My name is Paul Frank. I'm the acting coordinator of the NACO and SACO programs at the Library of Congress. So I feel pretty confident with authority work not so much with bibliographic work, so I'm going to ask Melanie to help me understand some of the things that I need to know about bibliographic description in RDA. Well, perhaps uh, we can start with one where you can answer the question because as an LC cataloger, I know that LC's policy is with old records that might be impacted by RDA. We're going to generally leave those alone, but is Bibco's policy the same? More or less, BIBCO has always under op operated under the principle of respect others' catalogers' judgment. And that means, you know, leave a record alone unless it has a, an egregious error or you identify something that's totally wrong. I mean, we all have bad days cataloging, right? So we might do something incorrectly. But the principle of, of respect others' work, do, don't take anything away that a person's added, is sort of the guiding principle of BIBCO. So it's, it's similar to, to LC. I think we're sort of, mm -hmm. LC is a BIBCO member, right? So, true, so we're, true. we're operating under the same principles. But I think it comes down to that respect the work that others have done. True. Okay, so let's work our way down the record. Since we still catalog and mark, I'm going to start at the top of the Mark Bibliographic Record with the 1XX field. So what, well, the biggest change, or perhaps the first and most important change to notice, is this is no longer called the main entry. Change of vocabulary. Right. So what's it called now? Well, we call it the authorized access point, and, you know, basically, it is a vocabulary change. What you're going to see in that 1XX won't be any different from what you would have seen under AACR2, but we do call it an authorized access point rather than a heading, and the field itself in the bibliographic record is not called the main entry any longer. Yes, I have to remind myself to say authorized access point because it is longer than the term main entry. So what would you say is the first change here from RDA that has affected the 1XX? Well, in general, I think you're going to be seeing a lot more 1XX fields in bibliographic records. And there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, one of the major reasons is the fact that RDA makes you think about or actually decide whether you're dealing with a, collaborat a collaborative work called a collaboration or a compilation. So I, I think you can explain the difference. True. I deal with them uh, quite regularly. So, you know, a compilation uh, specifically of multiple authors, we automatically make the decision to have title, uh, not title main entry, title only authorized access point. I have to get my voc vocabulary correct. Very good. Very good. If I have a compilation of a single author, well, then I'm going to have an author in the 1XX. That's nothing new. But I think the difference shows up with the collaborations, where it doesn't matter if you have just two authors or creators of some sort, or 15. As long as you have creators, then one of them, the first named or the most important, is going to end up in the 1XX. And with AACR2, we did not necessarily do that when we had more than three. But we'll kind of get to that in a moment. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. So in addition to the decision you must make about whether you have a collaboration or a compilation, the fact that we don't have that rule of three is the other factor that's going to lead, I think, to more 1XX fields showing up in, in bibliographic records. So, um, Well, that kind of leads us to the next yeah, field got, right away, the 240 and, more importantly, the 245, 245 yeah. because this is a, a hotbed of change. Right. What changes do you have? Well, let's use that first one. The rule of three is gone, so mm -hmm. that's... That's the big one, or one of the big ones, changes in the statement of responsibility. Catalogers' judgment, although we have other, another module that we'll talk a little bit about catalogers' judgment. The GMD, general materials designation, 
languages in the 240 field, um, often including an ampersand between languages or the word polyglot, and then typographical errors. So maybe we should go through these in a little more detail. Yes. How about the rule of three? The basic rule of three in AACR 2 always said if you have three or more authors, then it's going to be title, name, entry. Now, this goes back to that uh, collaboration decision. If you've got three or more authors, RDA says first named or principal one goes in the 1XX. So that three or more element has just completely gone away. We are no longer limited by that rule of three. Okay. So how about with the statement of responsibility? Well, I tried to, to narrow this down to the two main points, and there are others. I want you to look at RDA and read the instructions, but the two big ones are generally do not abridge a statement of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Second one is if there's more than one statement of responsibility, only the first one recorded is required. Yes. So that's the distillation of the changes. Please look at RDA to find more information about those. How about the GMD? Well, the GMD in and of itself is gone. It has been replaced by other fields, but the GMD that's specifically in that H subfield of the 245, that specific subfield in the title statement, we don't record it there anymore. We replaced it with the use of the 336, 337, and 338 fields, which are the content, media, and uh, carrier. Carrier. Thank you. See, I still have to work to remember them sometimes. I can't believe I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you remembered it for me. And those three also work in conjunction with the 300 field, which is the specific material designation. So it's talking about if you have, say, a CD-ROM, that's where you're going to specify that is that particular type of format where the 336, 7, and 8 will be slightly more general because they are using a very restricted list of vocabulary terms in order to maintain a consistent presentation there. So those have replaced the GMD and really are um, in some ways really an improvement because the GMD mix the carrier and content into that single element and now we've split them apart into separate elements which makes them more um, separately searchable for the computer in the long run. So how about those languages? Well, interesting uh, follow-on because of mixing, the, the mixing that Melanie just mentioned. I'm sure you've all seen a 240 field in a bibliographic record that has a title followed by a subfield L with the name of one language and then an ampersand and the name of a second language. Or you've probably seen a title followed by a subfield L with the word polyglot. Well, those are not valid. Neither of those is valid under RDA. Well, why is that? Because under the Ferber conceptual model, which, also, which has influenced the way RDA has, is developed or is created, a language, the language of a, of a title is an, um, indicates an expression, not a work. It's so, an so it's an attribute. That's the word I was looking for. It's, language is an attribute of expression. And RDA likes to have distinct expressions. So by mixing languages in one, two, forty, what we used to call uniform title field, we're sort of violating RDA. Well, we are. We are violating RDA. Absolutely. So the 240 with the multiple languages is gone. But what will replace those are seven XX fields with each expression given separately in its own seven XX fields. Yes, because we're giving access to the separate expressions even though we're in, say, one physical thing. So, I mean, I frequently have bilingual editions. Since I work with Spanish materials, I get quite a bit of stuff that's both Spanish and English. And that means I'm going to have one seven XX field for the original language without the language in the L subfield according to LC policy. Correct. Although this is a difference. PCC can do different there. Right. And a second 7XX will have the language of translation in that L subfield so that each one has its own access point. Okay. Typographical errors. What are we doing about those now? Well, this really goes back to that principle of representation. And this goes back to the transcribed fields where if you see it, then you Record it as you see it. No, not record. That's not the right word. Transcribe, Transcribe. it as you see it. I'm studying the difference on this. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so that means if you see it, an error in that title statement, you record it as you see it. Now, used to be AACR2 used those Latin abbreviations, uh, IE in brackets with the corrected form of the word, or sick to indicate, ah, here's an error. Uh, those are gone. 
because we are also going to a, a principle, I think, of clarity and no longer using the Latin abbreviations that nowadays not necessarily everybody knows. So you transcribe the error as given, and then you, if you need to, you give a corrected form in another access point in the 246, or if you prefer, in a note. And you can do this for the title statement and for other elements as well if needed, but we're focusing on the title statement right now. The other point, though, to make is serials get a slightly different treatment here because, of course, a serial has multiple issues and, well, you might have an error on one issue, but you're not going to have it on every issue, we hope. And so we want that consistent title representation for the 245 in a serial record where the error might be recorded in a 246. So as a variant access point, because yes, it was seen on an actual issue. We don't want to lose that, but we don't want to use it as the consistent title. Well, that makes sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Whereas my error is always consistent. I do them consistently <laughs> over and over. Well, hopefully that makes them consistently possible to change them. Thank you. <laughs> so now we are moving down past oh. the two four X's into okay. the two fifty, <laughs> And that is the addition statement. Addition so statement. what uh, changes have you noticed there? Well, addition statement is a transcribed element. Yes, Am not I, recorded. Not transcribed. recorded, transcribed. So that means if I see on a resource that I'm cataloging second edition spelled out in words, S-E-C-O-N-D-E-D-I-T-I-O-N, -E -E that's what I will put in the 250. Correct. I'm not going to put the ordinal numeral 2ND ED period to save space on a printed card because we're not thinking about printed cards any longer. Yeah, that's one of the changes that makes it so much easier now to not abbreviate is the fact that we don't have to worry ourselves about the limitations of that physical space. So we don't have to abbreviate unless that is what we see. You're transcribing. Right. Okay. So um, I think I'm clear on that. But let's, I'm curious about these brackets. Now we've talked a little bit about square brackets and maybe this is the time. Well actually this is the first time we've actually been able to bring it up to this moment because we aren't using the brackets anymore in that title statement where we would have with sick. Well, yeah, you, that's what I was thinking about when you said sick and at that's all. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so we had a use for brackets before to indicate that this information is coming from not the chief source of information for this element or for that list of authorized sources if there are more than one. Well, RDA has expanded that definition, I believe. Very good. <laughs> okay, meaning what? That well, we're no longer limited to just that source because RDA almost always says that the entire resource is a source of information for pretty much any element. So we no longer are bracketing in near as much as we were before. That's really helpful because I'm used to AACR2 records with lots of square brackets and I could never figure out, well, is this something that the cataloger added? Is this something that was taken out of a, a source that wasn't prescribed for that element in AACR2? So I think the RDA approach makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. So fewer square brackets. So that does, you know, that affects the 245 somewhat, uh, but we'll discuss that in a different video where we talk about the statement of responsibility. and. We will see it occasionally in the addition statement if you are supplying the addition statement because one is needed. But most of the time we're transcribing. Oh, right. So an in a square bracket, an addition statement in a square bracket would indicate to me that that information was taken from outside of the resource. Exactly. So it is okay to have the square brackets, yes. but just in, in, in fewer instances, say, because of the, the RDA allows the entire resource to be considered a valid source. Correct. Okay, very good. So. Moving down, one more step, down to the 260, which is the field for publisher statement. And there's a big change there, right? This is the hardest one for me, everyone. I got to tell you, so I'm going to make a mistake for sure, but Melanie's going to correct me. I'll try my best. I reviewed this, and I came up with five major changes here. Ooh, boy. And tell me if I'm wrong. I tried to come up with the most important ones. Oh, I'm talking about place of publication now. We're, we'll talk a little bit in a while about the different tag, mark okay, tags, we'll but, but let's get to the elements that are here. So place of publication, only the first place of publication is core. Correct. So that's helpful. That's new. Take the first one that you see, that's it. 
you want to transcribe that place as it appears because it's a transcribed area, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if there are any larger places included there, you go ahead and transcribe those as well. Yes, yeah, so that's, like so that's your priority If it's Chicago, source. USA, or Chicago, Illinois. Illinois, you transcribe that. As found. As found. But if there is not a larger place, I believe we have an option to go ahead and include that. And this would be the square bracket approach, right? Because yes. we're adding that. And that's one of the alternatives that we are allowed to do. You can add the name of the larger place if that is necessary in your opinion, cataloger's judgment, right. uh, that it is important for clarification. No. As, you know, as a Spanish cataloger, I have more than one town named Cordoba in all the Spanish-speaking countries. There's one in Spain, there's one in Cuba, there's one in Argentina, and I think there's one in Chile too, and okay. perhaps others. So when I have that town as the place of publication, I'm almost always going to add the name of the country, the larger place of publication. Uh, and if it's not on my source, I'm supplying it, but I'm adding it to an already transcribed element, so I'm going to be adding it in the language of the resource. So this is a change. Oh, it used to be we did that in the language of the cataloging agency. Now we're doing it in the language of the resource. So I have to ask, because I know a little bit of German, mm -hmm. and I know that this, the capital of Austria, Vienna, is actually... Wien, W-I-E-N in German. Mm -hmm. So if I only have Wien on my source, resource, mm -hmm. and I feel it's important, my cataloger's judgment says I need to add something to that, I need to use the German language form of the country Austria, Österreich, mm -hmm. Österreich, not Austria. Correct. Okay, so that is a difference. So that's good that is to... a difference. It took is... me by surprise. Okay, okay. Well, Believe me, that's, that's only two of the things I've noted so far. Okay. First place name, first place of publication is core. Transcribe the place as it appears. Make that optional addition of the larger place. The third thing that I noted is that we no longer use that square bracket, Latin abbreviation SL, meaning without a place, a place not given. Yes. That's a cataloger addition saying that the place of publication was not given. Now, I know that the LCPCCPS will encourage you to infer a place of publication, yes. but if you can't, then instead of that square bracket with SL, the Latin abbreviation, you know, two things are wrong with that. The abbreviation, plus it's Latin, Correct. both gone. You would put place of publication not identified in that square bracket. Correct. Correct? Okay, very good. The fourth thing I noticed is that we are not abridging publishers' names any longer, and it goes back to that abbreviation policy. Right. We are no longer ab using the standard. Or abridge, standardized abridging. I guess abridging would be the word. Like if it says publishing instead of I would not put PUB automatically. That's an abbreviation. Oh, that's abbreviation. Okay, right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I don't leave any. Th I, I, it, it's a transcribed field, I guess. Right. Is what you it transcribe comes down as to. given, so you're not using those standardized abbreviations that we used okay. before, and those were once again related to that whole space issue. So we okay. don't have to limit ourselves in that way. Okay. And the last thing I noted is that um, we don't correct information. We transcribe it. As principle given. of representation, as you see. Mm -hmm. And we could make a note maybe to indicate yes, that there's Certainly there's always that error. option of a note if you do not, uh, if you feel, according to your cataloger's judgment, that the important right information needs to be recorded, which, you know, usually it's good to have correct information. Very good. Thank you, Melanie. Mm -hmm. that, that makes things a lot clearer for me. Always okay. ha I always have questions on these things. So now we have to get back to that really big change. It's not really an RDA change. Yeah. It's a mark it's change. It's a mark change, and it's, it's a big one. The 260 field is now superseded. Is that the correct word? Superseded, superseded by the, the 264 term. field. Small change when you say it, but big implications because now it's a good thing because the 264 is repeatable and using the indicators that are defined for use in the 264 field, we can now separate each element of a publication, distribution, publishing, mm -hmm. um, I said that, uh, manufacturer statement so that we get that granularity mm -hmm. that works really well with RDA yes. and also in a linked data environment in the future. It separates so. the elements out to their own field so that you can define between the publisher and the printer who is a manufacturer. Or another element that has now been subdivided, I guess you could say, is the publishing date from the copyright date. Because now if you want to record copyright, especially if it's different from the publishing date, you now have a specific field for that. 
No, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that because in the past, the 260 field was just jammed with all sorts of information. And a lot of times, I know there was a subfield E that just included additional information. It was very difficult to sort it all out, what yes. was actually described. Mm -hmm. So this is an improvement, yeah. I think, in the way we And there describe. are actually two indicators in play here because one of them does, as, I, as you mentioned, dif differentiate between these different roles, but the other one actually can indicate between current information and older information as a publishing oh, wow. statement, which for things like multi-parts can be valuable. If there was a change of publisher between volume five and volume six, that can now be recorded. Great. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, there's one other thing that just occurred to me that I wanted to mention here. This isn't in my top five, but maybe this is the next, the sub list. Um, that home country rule, we always, I always struggled with that. And yes, I don't need to talk about what it was, but, but because the first name place of publication is core, mm -hmm. you can stop there. Yes. You don't need to add an additional place for the, the country of the cataloging that you're doing or the country of the publication of a simultaneously published resource. Yes, so because, that makes things easier. Well, yes. And it's really a reflection of the fact that, you know, RDA is moving more and more toward international, internationalization. Did I say that right? It works for me. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I understood. And and the Anglo is gone. The Anglo-centric right, aspect of Anglo-American cataloging yes. rules is gone. We're so. moving in that direction more and more as time goes by. So home country. And tr and this is one of the things that has gone away as a result. Right. Right. All right. Do we still have to go on? We have to go down the record even more now. Right? Yes. There's a few more fields that we would like to look at. Okay. And so the next one is the 300 field. This is the physical description. We didn't. I did mention it before in relationship to the uh, loss of the GMD, but what changes have you noticed in just in the 300 field as a whole? Well, the lack of abbreviations, things that are spelled out. Mm -hmm. Although I learned from another video that I watched that sometimes you will see abbreviations used, um, but those are authorized, those are exceptional, mm -hmm. author, authorized um, abbreviations according to, to RDA, but for the most part, the 300 field will no longer include um, P, period for pages, pages will be spelled out. V for volumes. V for volume. You won't have the, was it U-N-N-U-M for unnumbered? You're now going oh, to wow. spell that out. Okay. This does mean they get longer, but once again, we're not limited by space. Illustrations is spelled out, colored is spelled out, um, all these other terms that have to do with that physical description. Now, I'm mainly focused on book terms. There are other ones, of course, that um, come into play. I can't list them off the top of my head because I don't use them enough. But right, right. But you know where to go to find the answer the when, you, when you have it. Yes. Okay. Now, what about the CM? Do we need to bring that up again? Everyone talks well, about the CM. Well, let's just say the period doesn't have to do with the abbreviation. Okay. We're not abbreviating the CM. We're just following ISBD punctuation. So we can stop there. CM is a, is a symbol, not, a, not an abbreviation. Right. Okay. Very good. Well, I'm good on the 300. <laughs> What's next? The next one <laughs> like is <laughs> the 4XX. It's the 490 in general for the series statement. I mean, here's a difference in policy. You know, I, as an LC cataloger, will, will record the series statement, but I'm still not doing any series authority work. So I'm not recording the 8XX. That is often the related field for many PCC catalogers. So I don't really want to dwell on this field very much. I will simply note that that 490A subfield is a title field. So, because it's the series title, and therefore title rules that we already discussed in the 245 pretty much apply here in the same way. Well, that's good to remember. That's good to know. Yes. Uh, it's, it, a, a series is, is a title. Title, title, title is, is a title. Title, title mm -hmm. is a title. Very good, very good. And then the final fields to look at here would be the 5XXs. Well, you know, I'm thinking about this, and, and just like the 300, I think we'll see fewer abbreviations or almost no abbreviations in yes. notes field. Certainly the one that crops up most frequently is includes bibliographical references, pages is spelled out. Where when I have to give pages. Spelled out. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that, yeah, the only other thing that I can think of in my reading of RDA, which is a nice thing again, is that the prescribed order of notes that we had to follow in ACR2 doesn't appear in RDA. Correct. So I think in theory we'd be able to see notes given in any order in a bibliographic record. Yeah, which, you know, truthfully that's just as good because oftentimes the decision about how the uh, notes are presented is really oftentimes done by the display of the discovery layer. It has, it's not really limited by what we have in our marked record anymore. So that's just as well not to have to worry about that limitation. Well, Melanie, I think we've covered everything that we need to cover. 
Yes, we've worked our way through most of the fields. 6xx's are subjects, not relevant. 7xx's, you kind of repeat some of what you got in the 1xx. So those are really some of the biggest changes from AACR2 to RDA. So I hope you found these very informative. I certainly did. I did too. And we're all learning. Even though RDA has been around for a while, we're still learning new things, right? <laughs> the way it is. It's a living thing. Um, I just want to let everyone know, if you have questions, you should feel free to send your questions to NACO at loc.gov or um, co-op at loc.gov. Or if you're really brave and you're uh, subscribed to the PCC discussion list, you might want to take a stab at posting your question on, on that forum yes. and let and you might get more answers than you were ready and for. And you get a lot of answers, but there are a lot of different interpretations, and it's a really good way to learn. You learn by seeing how others I, are doing things. So. I find those discussions quite illuminating sometimes. Same here. Okay, thank you very much, Melanie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.